Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, September 24th, and it is a cold and rainy, miserable fall morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. But what are you going to do? <clears throat> yeah, I like fall, um, but fall mornings are just, they're hard to get moving. Uh, some, something about that shift from summer to fall, I guess, and uh, but fall afternoons tend to be glorious, so we shall see. People sometimes ask why I talk about the weather. Um, I know it annoys some people, but I like the weather. I like the cycles. I like to I like to pay attention to that. I think it's important. So. Plus, it gives me a way to start the darn video. Ah, so today, oh, I am smoking uh, my Sassini four dot. Thank you, Doug. And I am enjoying a bowl of John Patton. You're not going to be able to read that, probably. Come on. Where is it? There we go. John Patton Oriental Dusk from 2015. This is the tobacco of the week, diplomatically chosen by the folks on the Friday Night Livestream. If you don't know what that refers to, go back and watch the Friday Night Livestream. It's, uh, it's always available as a replay. And we always have a great time, so you should join us. And I've got my Nimrod Admiral lighter, which is a beautiful lighter, and my tamper today. I am so happy about this. My buddy Larry Blackett came out with some new tampers for Halloween. I got plenty of Halloween tampers. I talked about this on the live stream as well. But when I saw this, I just had no choice but to jump on it. Look at that. Those of you who have been watching me for a while know that the... Universal Frankenstein movies are some of my favorites, and Larry has just done an incredible job capturing the Lugosi Frankenstein monster. And just look at the detail on that. That bolt, I mean, it, it's undercut in a way that makes it look like it, it could almost unscrew. Just amazing. Heavy quality pewter tamper. So, buttons for your britches on Instagram, the number four. Uh, buttons number four your britches. Uh, Larry's a great guy and he has a, an incredible uh, product in his two pewter tampers. I'm going to have plenty of them, but I'm going to buy more because I just love them. Anyway, John Patton Oriental Dusk. We'll talk more about that uh, later. So, I've, this is going to be a topic that uh, you know some of you guys don't like when I talk about such things. But you know what? Go watch somebody else if you don't like it. I don't mind. I make the videos for me primarily. so, uh, And I hope you'll come back next week when I talk about something else. I've been thinking a lot about government and governance and uh, respect. So, this is going to make... Uh, my anarchist friends angry at me, but there is a basic human need, the requirement to be governed. You know, we, if you think about it, you, you know, the, the simplest forms of society, you know, the primitive tribes, uh, what do they do? Well, they have a, they have a, a chief and they have a medicine man and, and this is how things are, are sort of governed. Uh, you set up a pipe club. First thing you do, elect a president, elect a treasurer, because you need that governance. Um, religion. Most churches, uh, I believe all churches, not maybe all religions, but all churches, have some form of, of governance. You know, there's a, there's a pastor, there's a rabbi, there's a, a priest, a bishop, a pope, whatever. Uh, this is important, and the reason it's important is that it's part of human nature to disagree. You know, we, we, we want to think and we want to be individual and sometimes we bump up against one another and we have to sort this out some way. And yes, I can sort out with my neighbor whether or not um, or I, should, I should, I don't know, mow my lawn or whether or not he should mow his lawn or whatever. 
But you can't do that on a grand scale. You can't do that across the, an entire borough or across an entire state or a country. You need some governing body to help you sort these things out. So how does that work? How do we how do we let them sort these things out for us? And we're very vague about what these things are because it could be anything. It could be whether or not you uh, build a new road or whether or not you have to mow your lawn or you know, any, anything. Well, we do this by, in you know, our part of the world, we elect representatives and they go on to represent us and they make the decisions for us and then we abide by those decisions. So we do surrender a bit of freedom in, in that process. But we get a, a significant reward and we maintain control over that through the electoral process, in theory. Uh, so we're not completely surrendering freedom, uh, assuming we do have free and fair elections. We're just momentarily allowing someone else to speak for our, our wants and needs and, and help us all get along and move forward as a society. It's a very basic need. But for that to work, the governing body has to, in some way, be able to exert control. And if you think about it, and I have been thinking about it, there's really only two ways that that can happen. Uh, I, I at least can't think of any others. Ideally, it's done out of a sense of respect, out of a sense of trust and, and belief that that person is representing me and doing what I would like to see done. And therefore, when they say, or that governing body that they belong to says, you have to do this particular thing. You have to mow your lawn. Well, I mow my lawn. I may not want to, but I do it because I respect that authority. That's the ideal situation. The other method is through force. Whether it be police force, military force, blunt violence. Um, so you, you do what the, what the tribal chief tells you to do, otherwise you're cut off from the tribe and you're left to die on your own in the wilderness. Uh, you don't speak out against the government or else you wind up in a gulag. You only have one child or else you lose your job, you have your bank accounts frozen, and your wife is forcibly sterilized. Uh, you hand over a certain percentage of your income to the government, decided by the government, or else you're put into jail. This is force. These are examples of force. And it happens up and down the scale from the smallest organizations all the way up to the, to the large governments because, again, people are people. Now. It can get out of balance, and in some of those examples, it, it was well out of balance. Uh, taxation, we could have a whole, whole chat about that, which we're not going to right now. But you could argue there's a need for taxation, and you could argue that there's a need for a penalty for not abiding by that. Whether or not that percentage is determined properly is, is, is the, the root of the question there. But those are the only two options. And for a very long time, at least in my part of the world, we've gotten by with a pretty good balance between those two. We don't always trust the elected in individuals. Because there's always been corruption. You know. 
uh, we don't always necessarily believe that they represent our best interest because it is an electoral process and sometimes the person that you vote for loses. Um, you know, the other guy's candidate wins. And, but what we do in that case is we, we, in theory, step back and say, okay, this is what the people want. Let's see how it goes. There'll be another chance in four years and six years to, to fix this, in theory. And let's, for the sake of this discussion, ignore the fact that that theory is out the window now. Um, so respect is important in governing. It's extremely important. When a governing body loses respect, how do they react? When the Mafia Don loses respect, does he gather up the people and explain himself and attempt to make reparations for whatever wrong he might have done and, you know, try to sway the opinion of, of the group that he is governing? Or does he launch a vendetta? It's very hard to regain respect. It's very easy to shift to force. It's very easy to, to sway that balance, especially when you control the mechanism by which that force is exerted, whether that be your henchmen or the, the uh, opinion of the, the, the congregation or the tribe uh, in terms of being able to ostracize someone or the military. It's very easy to shift the force. I remember being in high school, and I, I clearly remember the first time I heard the word August, or as it's pronounced in this context, August, used as an adjective. Um, I was in, uh, what was it called at the time? It wasn't political science, it was civics or something like that. Clash. Civics, current events, civics and current events, some, something like that. I don't remember that, but I remember the teacher saying, in, in discussions about, or in teaching us about the structure of the U.S. government and the differences between Congress and the Senate, and the fact that the Senate has a six-year term, um, he, he said, I believe it was around the six year term. He said, that's because the Senate is an, a more august body. And I actually had to go look it up because I didn't know, I didn't understand that word in that context. So I looked it up and I'm gonna, I looked it up this morning again, just so I could give you the sort of definition that I found. So, as an adjective, august means inspiring reverence or admiration of supreme dignity or grandeur, venerable or eminent. And venerable, just to expand on that word a little bit, is defined as commanding respect because of great age or impressive dignity, worthy of veneration or reverence, as because of high office or noble character. So, the Senate, the U.S. Senate, was considered an august body because they were considered... They, you, didn't, you didn't walk out of college and run for Senate. 
right? You work your way up. It's kind of like in baseball when you when you spend your time in the minors. You know, <laughs> before you get to the big league, you work your way up. And you know, in a sense, being a senator, you know, considering there's only two from each state and and the power that that body holds, that's incredibly. It, there's an incredible amount of responsibility in that in that position, and you need to command respect. You need to be that older, mature, matured, venerable public servant in that office. That's the way the the, the government's worked for a very long time. That respect is important because what's the alternative? The alternative is not a good thing. You know, the alternative will not make you happy. Now, again, there's always been examples. You know, you're, somebody's going to say, "Oh, well, you know, back in the 1800s, there was so and so who was a senator." And, you know, yeah, I know, I know. But by and large. The body of the Senate was commanded a degree of respect, and we're losing that. We're losing that, and I think we should demand better. Something like a dress code might seem silly. You know, it might seem in this day and age, making somebody wear a suit and tie to go to work might seem antiquated and unimportant. But it's not. Any job interview that I've ever been on, and granted I'm not I, I work in a particular field where, where this is the expectation. Any job interview that I've ever been on, I wore a suit and a tie for it. If I were interviewing someone, a, a man obviously, and they did not wear a suit and a tie, I would assume that they were not taking the interview seriously. That's part of the culture that I work in. It, it's an unfortunate fact that if the best candidate in the world walked in wearing blue jeans and a hooded sweatshirt, they probably wouldn't get hired. To both their detriment and to our detriment. Because they don't command that respect. My father told me once, I, I asked him how I should dress for something, and he said, you should wear a tie and a sport coat. And I said, I don't know if that's what they're expecting. And he said, don't dress out of respect. Don't dress out of respect for your audience. Dress out of respect for yourself. And that stuck with me for a long time. Uh, well, to today. When that candidate shows up in blue jeans and a hooded sweatshirt, I have to assume that they don't have very much respect for themselves. Or that's the amount of respect they have for themselves. Now, if I'm interviewing somebody to do, you know, to put a roof on the building or something like that, that's, that's different. That, that, it's a different standard. And it doesn't mean that that person is less respected. It just means that they respect themselves to the appropriate level for that position. But when a U.S. Senator shows up looking like that, what does that mean? And when the U.S. Senate decides that it's okay, what does that mean? What does that tell you about how they see their role and how they will govern? how they will maintain power over the people that they govern. 
scary. So think about that as you're watching events unfold. Well, John Patton Oriental Dusk is a wonderful blend. Um, it, it is a Virginia Burley cigar leaf blend with Orientals. And it is just phenomenal. And this is 2015, so what's that? Eight years old? seven, eight years old, something like that. So it's probably mellowed out a bit. And, but it was it was good right out of the the bag when I bought it. It's uh, only, John Patton blends are only available at Four Noggins, but they're wonderful. Never had a bad one. What I like about this is, is the, the depth that that cigar leaf gives it combined with the Orientals. The Orientals have that nice sort of sourness to them, and the cigar leaf is very cigar-like. Um, it's not like Grey Ghost, where it actually feels like you're smoking a cigar, but there's just enough cigar leaf in there for you to say, oh, there's cigar leaf in there, and it gives that really nice depth to the blend. Yeah, I like this. And I am so happy that it was democratically selected by the folks on the live stream in a fair vote. Although, full disclosure, the Captain, Captain Black grape constituent are claiming that there were some irregularities in the vote. Man, I'm going to get this video flagged one way or the other. <laughs> Uh, so it's raining. We're not going to do much today. Got some indoor chores to do. Might do a little bit of work down here. Spent most of the day down here yesterday. Uh, got my my grinder wheels balanced. That's a whole long story that I don't want to talk about right now. Um, did a little bit of work with uh, some other things that just needed to be done down here and did a little bowl turning. I uh, got one blank, second one, just the, the wood that I used wasn't very good, so I had to ditch that one. That happens. But I've got, I'm just going to putter today. That, that's the bottom line, just going to putter. I wish the rain would stop because I have to take apart that old ramp that, that I replaced last week. But we're gonna we're gonna have rain most of the day, so we will see. Uh, Tuesday's my 25th wedding anniversary. I'm very excited about that. Um, well, I'm not excited about that. I guess I'm happy about that. So, I'm gonna be spending some time with the misses this week and uh, taking her out to dinner on Tuesday night. We're gonna try to do some things during the week and over the weekend. Uh, because of that, I am not having a Friday live stream this week. And next week, I'm going. the week after that, I'm going to be going up to Vermont to visit my brother and sister. And that means I will not have a Friday night live stream the following week either. So there'll be two weeks with no live stream. I'll be back October 13th, Friday the 13th, to start off spooky season as we move towards Halloween. Which is part of the reason why this is out now. And uh, I've got a really cool gift to share with you that my wife gave me the other day. Uh, is related to Halloween and uh, and spooky season. So, uh, may or may not be back next Sunday. Not sure, but I'll try to do some posts, and I'll, I'll certainly be posting on Instagram as, as time goes on. Uh, so, worst comes to worst, there'll be a two-week break from me, which you might enjoy at this point. <laughs> and I will see you after that. So with that, friends, I'm going to draw this to a close. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for liking, subscribing, notification bell, all that stuff. Helps spread the word about the pipe community. Um, so please, if you haven't, go ahead and do those things. 
And with that, uh, I'm going to draw this to a close. So until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.